What if making more in your business was just easy? What if you didn't need to work more hours or change anything strategic or logic to build your wealth in your business? A friend of mine, Patricia, believes that this can be achieved through the power of feng shui. Now, if you're hoping for earning more to just flow easily, watch this video all the way until the end because Patricia has some really amazing tips and an incredible offer for you too. So Patricia, I'm a logical thinker. I love the idea of feng shui. So how does feng shui work? And how is it that like rearranging my desk or adding a plant or like a water feature or something, how does that like affect what happens in my life? Okay, so there's a lot of questions there. Can we start with the first one? <laughs> So, what is feng shui? So feng shui is an ancient practice. It's 5,000 years old and um, it has been around obviously for a long time because people have been getting results from it. And it basically really connects back to the energy of things. So when we work with like absolutely everything in the universe is energy. Like, so we know that there's like the physical, tangible things. But if you look at it in a microscope, there's like actually it's all just energy. So um, when we talk, start working with feng shui, it is we're working with the energy of a space, an environment, a home. So this practice 5,000 years ago, when people like kind of the bigger concept is we're feng shui a home, not just like a desk. It's the same idea as a desk or a, a living room, a bedroom, but it's more so when I work with people, it's like we work on your home to balance your home. And when you built, when people built houses in ancient times, they built houses very intentionally. So they didn't just kind of like, oh, here's a big plot. I'm just going to plant the, plunk the house anywhere. They literally spent time going, this is going to be my home forever. And I'm going to really have a bit of intentionality. So we put the house down and they find like, where is there going to be most support? Where is it going to have the, like in terms of a mountain? Where is it not going to get flooded? Like the real locational um, and thing. So there was a lot of intentionality. And now fast forward to today where it's like, oh, here's a plot of land. We're just going to put like a bunk load of houses here. There's no plans. There's no like, uh, oh, let's strategically fit as many houses as possibly on this and this plot, as opposed to what's the most kind of auspicious, energetically supportive space. And when we translate like feng shui into kind of English, like plain language, it means good health and good harvest. So good harvest means good for money. So we want houses and they feng shui houses basically essentially is people who live in houses that are feng shui are going to be healthy, happy and wealthy. <laughs> so that's essentially what we want under the house. So it works on energy and um, the easiest way to kind of explain it is it's acupuncture for your home. So essentially when, if you ever visited an acupuncturist or an, to acupressure, you will go and sit down. They will not like um, tell you what to wear. They're not going to give you advice about what to wear. What they are going to do is going to check the energy that's moving through your body. And they'll be like, okay, that's off. This is off. That's off. Okay, I need to put these needles in your body to rebalance your, your body, to bring it into flow, essentially. So where's off? Where's on? Okay, let's bring this into harmony. And we like now acupuncture is so widely accepted as a method of helping people heal physically in their bodies. So feng shui is basically the exact same thing. We acupuncture people's homes. Okay, and like think about that experience going to the acupuncturist. You go to the acupuncturist, they're also maybe going to give you advice about your diet. They're going to say, okay, well, are you eating these specific foods? Like, have you thought about your mindset? Have you thought about the like going and doing some exercise? So when it comes to feng shui, the work that I do is literally the acupuncture for the home. So someone sends me in the information about their house and I can analyze it from a distance because the acupuncture is about the clothes the person's wearing, which is the same. Feng shui isn't about the, the design, the, the interior of your house. Like some aspects would be important, but it's not like, you know, wearing, you know, a, a red dress or a purple dress or a, you know, black pair of trousers isn't going to like make a big difference to your health well-being it's the same with uh with the house basically when it comes to that it, they send the details to me we analyze the house and we're like okay well this house actually the energy is off in this area so in feng shui we have nine areas of your home and they represent different parts of your life so your health your career your finances you know your your fame and reputation like how like how you're getting on in your um your family and this propensity to kind of shine your light in the world also your travel like so there's so many different aspects and I like to actually mirror that back to those areas of your life are pretty much the same as the organs of your body so like our heart has a job 
our lungs have a job, our liver has a job. They're all kind of doing their jobs. One of them is off whack. It's going to send our body off whack and us off whack. It, the same happens in a certain area of your home. If one area of your home is off whack, basically not doing well. It's going to send all the other parts a bit off as well. Like it's not going to be good for the other parts, but it's going to specifically be, be, be that one area, which is the same in feng shui. Some parts of the home energetically could be absolutely amazing and someone could be flourishing in their finances, but their health is really bad. But that's because the health area is not happy. Like it's just off balance. So that's kind of like how I like to explain it. Like very simply, essentially what we do is we acupuncture people's homes. And the, and actually this is where the misconceptions come about, where you're like, how could putting a plant here or change in my desk reflect to my life? That is like the additional information. So when we look at feng shui, it's almost like an, it's like an, an iceberg. So at the tip of the iceberg, there's the things I can say to you, okay, Paige, like in your office, we need to set up your office. with the, These are the optimum ways to set your op- office up. And that's going to be helpful. So it'll be just like, Paige, the acupuncture said, do you know what? Maybe some uh, magnesium will be good for you to get some sleep. Mm. So it's like, here's a little thing you can do that's going to make you help help you sleep. It may not fix it, but it will definitely be an additional benefit. So the tips that we learn and we see online are the typical things that people don't, re- that kind of like they've heard, like keep the toilet seat down. Like hygienically, keeping the toilet seat down is a good thing. You know, it is a good thing. Like, but from a practical thing and from an energetic thing, think about your home, like the areas of your home that is releasing and letting go. So the the toilet is releasing and letting go. We don't want everything to go, you know, so that's why we, you know, so that's why it's like, it's, you can really synergize it with the body in the house. Um, So then when it comes to putting specific things, so you asked about like putting a water feature, putting a plant, putting red in different areas. So just like feng shui, um, feng shui is, um, the lineage comes from traditional Chinese medicine and they work with the five elements, fire, water, metal, earth, and wood. So all of those are the five, they're the five elements that we want to use to harmonize, that we use to harmonize a home. So if we think back to, imagine, I don't know, Paige, where's your favorite place in nature to go? Like where you just feel like, oh my God, I feel so good in nature. Any countryside walk with a beautiful view. <laughs> okay. So a countryside walk with a beautiful view. So you're like, oh, the grass, there's the trees, there's the earth beneath you, there's the flowers, there's the sun, and you just feel really good. And everything is doing its own thing. Like the tree, the, the grass is growing, the flowers are blooming, the trees. There's just, it's just in flow. It's in the rhythm of nature. And every flower gets to fully express itself perfectly. Every plant does. It's just like, and you feel good because the energy and the energy of that place of that nature is just so good. And it helps harmonize you. It helps you feel good. And the same goes for your house. So your house has specific energies. And when we, what we want to do when we're bringing balance into people's homes and I'm looking at, okay, well, this area is out of whack because there's not enough um, fire element in this specific area and it's bespoke. So every house is unique. There's not a fire element in this area. Mm, Okay. So we'll just bring something right into that area or we need some more wood element. So we're going to bring something from nature into the house and it will like literally recreate that sense of harmony and balance. So a lot of people would say to me, Trisha, my house is a big mess. And they'd be like the clutter, like, and they're like, I can't function my house, it's a big mess. And I'm like, to be honest, I bet you it's not as messy as you think it is. I'm a, not a naturally tidy person. And the clutter isn't necessarily like that's sometimes it's called life, like the dishes on the table, on the, on the counter and the kids playroom full of toys or the office that has some stuff around, like that's called life, you know, inevitably that's going to get tidied. That's not fixing your feng shui, because <laughs> that's visible, that's the aesthetic, that's like, oh yeah, you know, you're in your grubby clothes one day because you're cleaning the wind, you're cleaning the house or something and then you get dressed up, like you do feel a bit different when you get dressed up, but it's not going to like change the fundamental energy if you're, if you're inherently have an illness and it's the same with your house. Um, so mm. the plan, the different things that we bring in are specific to your home and they're specific to what your house needs to balance it. And essentially what I envision is that when someone comes into the house, it doesn't necessarily, when you function a house, it doesn't need to look different. It 
feels different. And everyone's life, mm. everyone who's living in the house has more flow, more joy. And they feel like they're in that place in nature. They're like, everything is just nice and perfect and easy. That's amazing. Okay, incredible. You mentioned something interesting there. You said like there's these nine core aspects. Mm-hmm. Is that Does that relate to like locations in the house or what is what is that? Exactly. Yeah, so so there's different schools of feng shui. And this, again, is where when something comes from the east and comes to the west, um, it can get d- diluted. And we're like, like, oh, make it super simple, mm-hmm. whatever. So there's different schools. And the school that I practice is Classical Flying Stars, which actually um, works with the compass. And we then figure out where the areas are based on the compass. Um, so there are nine areas. And some houses, that area might be missing. So I've had uh, instances mm-hmm. of clients who've come to me going like, oh my God, like my financial situation is so bad or my family, like nobody's speaking to me. This is an exact real life example. We had a client who um, came to me and she actually was using the old school, the other school, kind of like the McDonald's version of feng shui. So you've like the McDonald's version and then you have the five star, like perfect, you know, the version that's going to like customize to you. So um, it was like someone, I don't know, someone trying to build a square safe space site, just like Googling stuff and then like doing your course. You know, it's like, okay, this is exactly what you should do. I was like, I'm just going to try and mangle it myself. Or so the different schools of feng shui, this woman came to me for years. She had um, thought that her prosperity area was... Um, um, missing and she came she's like oh my prosperity area is missing and then I did it and I was like no no no, it's not your prosperity area it's your family area and then she goes oh my god that makes so much sense and I was like okay so she had moved into that house and from the midday she moved in there was like a massive disagreement with her family overseas and she'd never spoken to them they'd never spoken to her or them again in five years nothing so the nice thing about feng shui though is that there's always a remedy there's always something that we can do to balance harmonize and fix it so it's like no house is doomed there's it's like every house there's potential for every house to be even more harmonized and balanced so she says to me she's like I was like okay here's what you have to do for your house specific to her house and next thing she sends a message into our whatsapp group and she's like I can't believe it my father has just rang me he hasn't spoken to me for five years after putting the remedy in to balance that area that wasn't even there. So like the, when people come for feng shui, they often think, well, they do say they, they're like, oh, money or career. But like the, on a bigger level, it's like it impacts every part of your life. So for me, it's this amazing practice that is every part of your life is touched with it. And if there's some part of your life that's out of balance, what I see a lot with people is they come into our world and they're doing great, maybe great in some parts, but there's other parts that are like, they're working their asses off. Like they're like logically thinking like Paige, like, okay, this is a problem. I need to do this, this, this. I need to read these books to fix it. And I'm like, yeah, you can do that and it will help. But if your house is, you know, I don't know, if it was like fertility, for example, like, like I don't know, anyways, random one. Or if it was, you know, and you're like, I'm doing everything and nothing's happening. Or I'm doing um, like your your fame and reputation. Like, like do all the PR and nobody's seeing you and you're still not getting it. And you've paid a PR agency thousands and you've done all the funnels and all the stuff. And it's like, what the hell is wrong? Like, why can't people see me? You're like, oh, that area is missing. Or it could be just out of whack. Like the balance might not be there. And then we put the remedies in and it balances it so um yeah I hope this is clear that's amazing that is clear okay um so let's talk about related to a business and related to Mm -hmm. building wealth in your business what are the telltale signs that a place isn't working for you for money like if you move into somewhere and suddenly your business is just not doing well or well I don't know like from the time you've started it's not doing well what do you do in that situation (laughs) okay so there's a few things like first of all I spoke to a client the other day and when she moved into her apartment literally at her house she lost her two biggest paying clients that day Mm. and it was like the other thing is it was her dream apartment like it was like it was stunning it had a pool it was like so aesthetically beautiful she's like oh my god this is gonna be the biggest upgrade of my life and then I was like what just happened um so I would say the the first thing is being conscious of like it could not it might not just be you 
is really important. The second thing I would say is like setting yourself up, like in terms of from an office perspective, like have a dedicated workspace. Um, and I like people ask me like, where do I start when it's just like basic feng shui? Um, I would start, start with your office and your bedroom because they're the two areas you spend a lot of time and especially your workspace because you're going to be literally creating from that area. So from a workspace perspective, like you can see me, I'm sitting here back to, back to the wall. I have a nice high office chair with a really good support. So it's like energetically, like I'm mindfully setting my space up so that I'm the boss of my business here in this space. I'm like, I've got a space. It's dedicated for me to work. I've got a nice desk. I can see the door. So a lot of people, especially in business, when they started in online, they're like, oh, I'm just going to take this corner of the spare room and squidge myself in here and just work and have my back to the door and feel totally stressed. But if you're sitting with the back to the door, the energy is coming in, landing on your shoulders, creating the sense of overwhelm, stress. Like I've seen it with clients time and time again. I'm like, you need to turn around. You need to be able to see what's coming. You need to be prepared. You need to have support. So it's like a kind of a physical setup of your space. Um, from a from a financial perspective, like it could be one of many things. And actually, I go through that in my mini course, which like kind of and you can actually analyze because it could be the house type, it could be the shape, it could be lots of different things. Um, and there's different like remedies for all of those things, but they're more bespoke to your house as opposed to general. So for me, there's a kind of list of things I would start doing. The first would be the awareness, like check out the mini course, so you kind of like, oh, maybe it's my house. Um. A, the next is I would go through your house and like look for areas where there is like stagnant energy. So what do I mean by stagnant energy? It's not the dishes on the counter. It's not the messy bed from this morning. It is the cupboard that you haven't looked at in six years or a few years that's like literally clogged up with crap because that is literally clogged up. It's going to be a mirror into your life. There's something that's blatantly blocked, you know, it's like you're being constipated, basically a part of your house. So, so like the back to the body analogy. So then I would then invite you to step into your house, like Go around your house and start at the very front door and be like, I want to look at this place with fresh eyes. Like, does it feel like flowing? Like, can I get in easily? Like, I love um, working with the front door and having that nice and easy to open. Welcome the chi in, welcome the energy in. And then just start to walk around your house and, you know, basically having broken things or things that aren't working in your house will reflect broken things and things that working in your life. So like get rid of them, you know, and go through your house just and see if there's things that are like that and, and, and work like work from there. So they're like my main things. And then from a prosperity, it's like keep the toilet seat down is a good one and make sure there's no leaks. So if there's anything mm. leaking or dripping again, like broken, it's not working, but leaking, it's like, oh, a leak on your in your tap, leak in your bank account. You know, they all mirror. Everything that's happening in your house is a mirror. It's hard to get into your house, hard to get in. The money's hard to get in. You know, it's a struggle. It's a mm -hmm. push. So um, they would be some of the suggestions. Okay, that's amazing. Also, so actually, I'm thinking about this for myself specifically. We're moving into a new apartment. What <laughs> should I be looking for? When I go look for apartments, what is a sign of like a good apartment for feng shui? Um, what well, new apartment amazing so the first thing I would like look at is like the research of like what you know the shape of the apartment is good like you want a nice clear shape if possible like as simple as possible a like, very simple plane Um, also the um the history like who lived there before like just be like nosy be curious when you're driving up to the apartment you're driving there like how does it feel what are the other cars like like you know I think you know since when you moved into your apartment in London you're like in a real prosperous area everyone's doing well like what's the energy of the area you know be mindful of that um what is the what like how do you feel when you get in there um like what else would I be looking for and then I would try and avoid having the front door facing like a big coming out into a view or a big open window because you don't want the energy coming in and leaving they'd be the main things oh okay amazing so a lot of how it feels really so it's and then basic shapes that's interesting next, next thing was is it only our office that matters when it comes to like wealth building in a business? Do we just work on our office? Should we be working on other areas of the house? Um, from a prosperity area uh, or from a prosperity perspective, um, from just like practicality, I think the office is a really important space to do. Um, there's other areas in feng shui. It's like um, 
the southeast area of your home is the area associated with prosperity but to be honest I think that like that can get confusing for people to get started and be like oh my god like where is that area so I would like knuckle down on creating the most creative and um, aligned space for your business and that's where you're going to produce from and create from um uh yeah that's what I would say are there any other tips you said like a lot of the time it's like remedies like you're adding something in it's not necessarily like people are always think like oh she's gonna throw it on my furniture or something um but it's oftentimes like repositioning mm-hmm. things or adding bits in is there anything else that we could add into our office space or mm-hmm. home that would be good for our prosperity I think that for me, when it comes to your office space, it's like having inspirational art or artwork, like being really mindful of the type of art you have. So I have like one example of a lady's office and we were, I've looked at thousands of people's offices and this one always stands into my mind because she had it perfectly set up. Like it was like a beautiful desk and table and furniture and everything was so like wow amazing I was like I don't know what I'm gonna say to her then I was like tell me about that piece of art and she's like oh that piece of art that was my ex-husband's and I was like oh okay and then we zoom in on it and it was a picture of a winter scene okay so if we are in business we want to think of harvest we want to think of wealth we want to think of abundance we're thinking of growth winter is not necessarily associated with that so it's like be mindful of like what you have on your walls you know in your space and from a per career business perspective be really clear on um your where are you going like have your vision board in your office have your inspirational books that inspire you like create the space to be a place where you imagine that if you had clients coming that they could they rang you today and they're like hey can i i want a meeting you're like okay no problem come and you would be so proud and so happy and so like inspired to have them come and meet with you. And you'd be like, this is my office. Mm-hmm. That you actually create a space that is like ready for visitors. And um, even if you never, ever have someone come to your office, you create a space that's energetically ready for that. And that will then like you will totally make design and create a different office space um, with that in mind. All right. Love all those things. You have something which is also incredible something extremely affordable can you tell me about what this thing is yes so we've created a mini a feng shui mini course called feng shui 101 that basically dives into all the different aspects of like feng shui and explaining what it is how it works and how to get started um and this is just an amazing tool for you to understand and get started with feng shui um so that's what we've created Good. Amazing. Okay. We will link that below. That is so great. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for all this. This thank is extremely so interesting. I'm very curious to go take it myself. I want to go like learn some more of the basics to figure out what else I can do. And I'll definitely keep that in mind when I'm house hunting. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks a million. How incredible was that? Be sure if you're interested to learn more about feng shui and get started for an extremely affordable price, check out her link in the description below.